Hey everyone, it's Nick from Nick's Crossing, and welcome to another video up here in the attic train room. And today I'd like to talk to you guys of how I built this beautiful addition to the layout. And I've heard lots of comments through live streams, things like that, of how did you do this, how did that work, well, you know, how did you get that to do that. So, we're here, we're going to talk about it, hopefully it answers some of your guys' questions, and also inspires you to maybe build one of these on your own. And honestly, if I could do this, anyone could do this. It's pretty simple. A little tedious here and there, but very simple and a lot of fun. So anyways, let's get into it. All right, so before I even built this addition, I actually had to do some preparation. And that was a lot of mess, to be honest with you. Because I actually had to move the track down to make room for this 022 Lionel switch. So I had to move this entire track down, disrupting all the ballast, made a huge mess. But we got it done. I uh, got some reballasting in. You can see like a little bit different color ballast here and there. But it's all done. This works great. And I actually have this uh, set in automatic mode. So when trains come out of the yard, this switch will automatically turn like that. So it works really well. But anyways, getting into some of the bench work first. Uh, this is built out of pine, 1x2 stick pine lumber. Then we also have an 8th inch plywood front here for all the uh, control panels. We have half inch plywood for the main platform and then three quarter inch foam for the underlayment and this stuff is great it's very affordable you can glue it down very easily and it's a lot cheaper than that pink stuff that i've seen all over for layouts some of the other bench work i like to mention is that i actually put this extension table on casters or wheels and that is so i can roll this away if i were to have to uh, access my crawl space through that door this can actually roll away and all of my wiring is socketed. So when we get under there, I'll show you guys uh, what's up with that. It's really simple. It's all crimp sockets, things like that. So this can easily roll away to access that door. Now, on top side, uh, basically I just used three of these tubular style switches. Uh, these were all new old stock from the 1990s. They work great. They look great. They're lighted um, pretty quick on the automatic side. And also, all your wiring is hidden for your uh, remote switches there. I have these all powered through the track. I didn't put them through accessory. Same with this one here. But I might do that eventually to save some power on my track side of things. But anyways, moving on. Um, on top side, you can see right here, I have two wires that power the yard. And these are actually soldered to the mainline track in here somewhere. It's actually covered up with ballast right now. Because when I put this together, I had a huge dead zone. Same with this track in here. And I think it has to do with something with the switches and where the insulator pins are placed for the automatic switch modes. So it wasn't getting power and things like that. Because I do have another switch down there past the signal bridge. So this is all self-powered in here. And then what I did for extra... Uh, you know, why not factor. <laughs> I insulated each center rail for each one of my spurs in here. And that is how I'm able to have the track on. You can see the lights are on. And my trains are not moving. And that is called a block section. So each one of these spurs is blocked out so I can keep locomotives on there and have full track power. Uh, as of right now, I run everything conventionally. So that means I run track, transformer, just like the old school way of doing things. I do not have TMCC, Lion Chief, Legacy, DCS, any of that stuff quite yet. But I am looking into um, getting into some of that if I can run my older stuff still. So that would be uh, way down the line. But for right now, this is all blocked out. And my engines can sit here and relax while I'm running another train and then when I'm ready I can actually park the cars in this siding right here kind of like what I'm doing down here and pull up different engines and switch them out so that is one plus of having a yard you can kind of mess with things or we call these fiddle yards for short and they're a lot of fun um, another reason why I built this while well, we're here mentioning that I ran out of room for accessories so I had this beautiful switch tower that I put a red globe in there, it glows red. Um, also my icing station was up on top of the hill where my house is there. Then we also had the log loader, which is on the floor. I was ready to sell it, but 
Uh, a lot of my friends said, no, don't sell it, it's awesome. <laughs> so now it has a new home. And then also my freight shed or freight platform right there from MTH. So these all have a new home and I'm able to operate everything. But anyways, uh, all the block tracks also have a track stop at the end right here. So when I flip on the power, which I can do uh, through these dip switches on the front, check these out, or little toggles, the red light actually cuts on. So let's go to track two. Might be hard to see with this camera, but check that out. So all the way at the end, that little red light is on. And that tells me the track is getting power. So when I go to turn that off, that little red light at the end should turn off. Now, those are basically old Lionel MPC era track bumps that were not lighted, but they had the space for a light. So what I did was I took an LED and then I hot glued around it in the socket where the light would go. So it holds it in and then I painted the LED red. So um, pretty easily set up there. And then I ran the wires inside the tube track. So they're not soldered to anything, uh, easily removed, but they are mounted in the track. So if the train does go a little too far, they actually do hold the uh, train or cars to the track. It's pretty cool. But anyways, um, on the front here, while uh, we're mentioning the control panel, I've got all my remote switches, so all of these work. You can switch them all in red or switch them all in green or red whatever you like <laughs> just have to remember what direction they are and when you wire these up you got to make sure they're going the uh correct direction because if not you'll send your train you know going the wrong way things like that these are all my track toggles for example here's track four if i flip this on that uh baldwin will switch on and you can switch it down also, I put in a uh, activation track for the log loader. So you have the uncouple side, the activation. Then this is hooked up to the accessory for the log loader. And um, the freight station here is also wired up for a switch underneath the platform, if I can find it. So the freight load spins up and then spins down. Pretty cool, I like keeping it down, so looks like these guys have work to do. In the back, I added a Mark's um, Beacon Tower. It's pretty cool. Actually, I'm not sure if that's Lionel or Mark's. I believe it might be a Lionel Tower, so my mistake on that one. Um, but anyways, I kept the ice station uh, basically wired up down here, so if I hit ice, it should operate back there once I have the accessory power activated there he goes you guys can see it kind of so yeah we have a fully operational freight yard now underneath we'll get under there and i'll show you guys some of the wiring all right guys so welcome to the dungeon <laughs> here are all of my track toggles you can see one wire goes this way and the other one goes that way it's hooked up to the track to bridge the power for the blocks you can see each track here Here's the grouped wire for the uncoupler. And then for all my accessory power, I like to put everything in parallel mode or parallel wiring. So I have these toggle clips or splice clips spliced right on the main wire there. So I just keep on running and running accessories. Um, here's also the light. It's a little stressed there, but this is the light for the switch tower. And also my track power and everything else is socketed. These are the socket wires I was telling you guys about. So when it's time to move this, I can actually just uncouple those wires and then pull the table so away. So I forgot to mention before. So in three rail O scale, typically your outer two rails are your return, this one and that one here. Your center rail is your hot, which is your power side. Now it is AC, so technically it's alternating current, but we like to call the center hot and your outer your return. Now, you can see the wire is soldered right here, going into this switch, and then to this track right here. 
And in between it, there is an insulator pin, which is a little plastic pin right here too, that prevents power from traveling from rail to rail. Normally your pins are metal, so it can conduct electricity through pieces of track. Now because the insulator pin is there, this train is now dead in its tracks until I move it past that point and it likes to go. So, and it's also waiting right now for power. There you go, went back like that. So, that's how I was able to block all of this out using a block section. And the insulator pin on the outer rail is actually for the automatic switch, not for the blocking. So if you guys would like to do a blocked yard, all you need to do is make sure that center rail is insulated and keep your outer rails conductive, I guess that's the best way to say it. And you'll be able to block out track and things like that. I have seen layouts um, in prior that use a block section system. So when the train comes up to a block section, it's a non-powered section until the switch or semaphore or relay is thrown and then the train is able to travel across. So that's another way you can do block sections on your track if you wanted to have the train stop or put like a timer. I've, I've seen all kinds of cool and crazy ideas that work really well for railroads. But this is just the way I'm using block sections here on this particular yard. So there are certain things I have to remember while operating certain manufacturers in this yard, such as this Williams turbine engine. As soon as power is applied, it's going to go forward, such as this. So check this out. Other manufacturers, kind of like Lionel Post for you kind of get a little bit of time to decide which direction the engine is going to go in. So you have a little bit more control. Also, if you're running MTH ProtoSound 1, such as this bulb one over here, you can flip the track on and then it runs through its startup process. That's actually one of my favorite things to do is let these ProtoSound 1 engines that I have sit in the yard with the track power on and neutral to give the room a little bit of extra noise and sound. All right guys, so let's watch some trains run through this little yard. So let's get some trains rolling here.
everyone, that's going to do it for this yard expansion video. Hopefully you guys had a great time watching the trains go in and out of this yard. We added a few. I added the uh, NW2 to the yard. I think it's a safe place for her because she is a switcher. Also, the Baldwin is a switcher as well. We also have the El Capitan Santa Fe chilling in the yard now. And I can't forget the classic 2026 post-war Lionel steam locomotive that was hauling our cars around the track. But anyways, if you guys ever have any questions of how to build one of these or have any questions for us, feel free to give us a message on Facebook, email us, and we'll be there or even just commenting under this video. Love to hear your guys' comments and give the video a like if you enjoyed you know, what you saw or if you learned something. But anyways, if you guys are new to the channel, also consider subscribing and make sure to hit that bell for all so you don't miss layout videos just like this. But anyways, guys, until next time, happy railroading.